So trust and believe there is a purpose in you being at home. There is a purpose in you being alive. It doesn't have to be tied to the money that you bring in. You hey, what's up, y'all? This is Jermaine from the King's Room, one half of the King's Room, a.k.a. That Christian Fam. And tonight, I want to cut a video specifically geared towards men. This is going to be our first installment for a new playlist that we're going to be starting uh, called M4M, which is Message for Men. So women may be able to get something out of it. I'm pretty sure you can get something out of this too, but this is going to be catered towards men. Um, tonight, I have Nikki and I, our lovely daughter, Jatalia. This is our second born child. And... Um, um, it's a pleasure to have her with us, So, but she actually plays an intricate part in today's message. So today we want to talk about a man's self-worth. And uh, I can remember a time in my life where that was a huge battle with me, where I was struggling with a lot of different feelings uh, in my life because I found myself in a place where I was very unfamiliar with uh, and I wasn't used to actually being in that position. Uh, we had just made our transition uh, from where we moved from to Dallas, Texas. And um, when we moved here, Nikki, she instantly got a job as a teacher. She had taught for over a decade in Ohio. And, and then we moved back down south. Well, I'm, you know, y'all know I'm from the south because I'm from the good old state of Oklahoma. She's from that cold state of Ohio. Anyways, um, so we moved back down south to Dallas, Texas, and um, she instantly got a job. She had her interview set up um, where she got a job the first day. Well, I had a government contract. I was actually. Um, I had a government approval to work from home for 90 days after we made our uh, transition back down back here down south. During those 90 days, I worked from home, but we didn't know anybody here to take care of our children. At the time, we had just had Jatalia, and we had our oldest son, um, our, our firstborn, Jazaya. So we agreed to make the decision uh, that I was going to, or we came to the decision rather, that I was going to stay home with the children because y'all know if you have children, uh, the amount uh, that it costs for childcare is almost like bringing home a check. That's almost the amount of a mortgage rather, you know what I mean? So we made the decision for the first year of our transition that I was going to stay home with the kids because at the time I did have a pretty good um, stay at home business. Now in Ohio, I could put forth the amount of effort and time uh, to the business to where I can make it very profitable. But when we made the transition down south, um, I didn't have that free time. And with me staying home with the children, it brought about a couple of different feelings because I'm used to bringing home money to provide for my family. Nikki has, you know, had a job, you know, she has a job, of course she has a career of her own, but I'm used to contributing to the household in a monetary way, you know what I'm saying? Brother John understand exactly what I'm saying. So, um, here I am, yes, we came to an agreement uh, that I would stay home, but it didn't mean that that made it that much easier for me to just accept it. So, while I'm at home with the kids, I'm sitting back and I'm just like, you know, Man, my mind just wanders because, you know, we, we moved here and uh, there's a lot of people here in Dallas, Texas. There's over 8 million people in the Metroplex, Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And I'm just thinking about all the life that's going on around me outside of my home. And I'm thinking about all the grown men who are out there doing grown men things, whether they were a sanitation worker, whether they were a school teacher, whether they were a janitor, whether they were a doctor or a lawyer. They're all out there providing for their uh, children or providing for their family, rather, doing grown man things and just making things happen, you know, just conquering the world, so to speak, quote unquote. And so all of that life is happening around me and I'm at home doing kid stuff with my children. And so I don't care what you say. That is a tough thing to actually, that's a tough transition to go from bringing in money to bringing in next to nothing because, again, I couldn't dedicate the time and effort to my business like I wanted to before because, I'm, of course, I'm taking care of the children. So that was one struggle that really uh, that got to me and it started making me feel like I was almost less than, um, less than a man, rather. And so... Here are the things that I actually chose to focus on and, and remember and speak over my life 
to help me get out of that funk. I spend with them. Um, so I was able to realize, hey, listen, man, this is, a, this is just a season in my life. And I was able to, to grow a deep appreciation for being home with my children because I, I knew that this season was going to come to an end. And I may not be able to get this, uh, well, I won't be able to get this time back. There are a lot of people who never get that opportunity and never get the opportunity to be at home with their children to, 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 to develop that bond, that, that father-son, that father-daughter relationship. So I really developed a huge appreciation and, and a sense of gratitude for being able to stay home with my children. So try to find the silver lining in that. Try to do something. As you can say, well, brother, I, look, I ain't got no kids. I feel you on that. Well, listen. The thing that you said that you would do if you had time, now's a good time to try to figure out a way to do that. Now that you're at home, now that you're not doing anything, um, or you're not tied tied up with a job, try to go pursue the things that you said you would always do if you had the time. There's always a chance to maximize the, the moment in the current season you're in. Number three. I was able to be a huge blessing to Nikki when she came home from work. When Nikki came home from work, I was able to be a sounding board for her. I was able to be able to hear her, hear out her frustrations, to be able to listen to her highlights of the day, to, her, to be able to listen to the low moments of her day. I was able to be that person who she could just vent to, and I didn't have that buffer in between me and her of two incomes, both of us having a job, um, because I was available um, to be, you know, to minister to my wife. I know some of y'all saying, look, bruh, I ain't got no wife. I, ain't <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. I'm sorry. Listen, maybe you don't have a wife. Maybe you ain't got no girlfriend. But find a way to sow into somebody in your life. Trust me, you are worth more than just what you bring in. What you bring in uh, does not dictate your self-worth. Who you are in Christ is ultimately who you are, where your identity lies. And that's the last thing I want to talk about. We have to recognize our, our identity in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us time and time again that we are above and not beneath. We are the head and not the tail. We are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation, young king. We are a chosen generation. And ultimately, you have to remember what God has for you is for you. Don't worry about someone out there doing something that you can't do at this present uh, stage in your life. You just have to remember that if God has it destined for it to be yours, it's yours. I'm not saying that you don't need to put it forth to work, but what I'm saying is if you have done everything that you can possibly do, don't beat yourself up over that. Don't say, well, you know, I'm not worth this or I'm not worth that. Your, your self-worth is not tied to what you bring in to a household. Your self-worth lies solely in your identity in Christ. All right, y'all, it's been real. I hope this has blessed someone. I hope that someone on the other side of this camera um, is able to take something from this video to help them throughout their day. Syndication is key. Um, hit us up on all our social media platforms like Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We also have our website up now at www.thekingsrealm.com. All right. You got anything to say, baby? How you think I did? You think I did all right? She actually has a message for y'all. Go ahead. Stay followed of what God has for you. That's my five-year-old. All right, y'all. This is Jermaine King, one half of the King's Rim, a.k.a. That Christian Fam, and that's a wrap. <laughs>